Today I am covering 15 more film and TV shows with mature Suffolk ladies in them. After part one, you nominated so many I missed that I will be turning this into a series. Be sure to be subscribed if that is up your alley. Starting with Last Tango in Halifax. This delightful English dramedy follows Celia and Alan who reunite after 50 years only to discover that their feelings as youths are still there. They love each other and they want to marry and this news throws both their families into chaos. Celia's daughter Caroline played by the wonderful Sarah Lancashire is going through a separation and dealing with her newfound sapphism. For the first couple of seasons she is in a relationship with Kate played by Nina Sosanya, a familiar face who you may remember from Killing Eve. I was fully invested in this show and especially enjoyed the exploration of a mature powerful woman coming into her own sexuality but then the unfortunate bury your gaze trope reared its head and I was bitterly disappointed by it so much so I didn't finish the show. Still, what I saw of it, minus the bury your gaze, was great. And it was created by none other than Sally Wainwright, who is responsible for Gentleman Jack, along with some others you may know, like Scott and Bailey and Happy Valley. Her latest work, Renegade Now, according to the Tumblr gift sets on my dash, has some Suffolk activity in it for the lead. Keeping it English, EastEnders has a Suffolk storyline that is still in progress between the characters of Eve and Suki. As it's a soap, you know it's going to be a slow burn enemies to lovers. Although I haven't seen it, I did take a quick look at some edits and that's exactly what it appears to be. When Suki has a dispute with another East Ender resident that she's trying to evict, Eve is brought on as a solicitor. From there, an antagonistic relationship develops as they cross paths again and again, but hiding behind that animosity, it seems that Eve is developing feelings and it seems that Suki might be too. Only she has a hard time reconciling it, especially as it's not the first time she's had feelings for a woman and she didn't handle it well at all. She has some internalized homophobia to deal with. Over time things thaw between them and they progress as all good soap love stories do with setbacks and spurts forwards but eventually they find themselves in each other's arms and from what I gather it's a bit of a revelation for the typically spiky angry Suki who through the relationship learns to accept and love herself pretty big stuff. Eve is played by Heather Peace, a Suffolk lady who appeared in Lip Service, a show I mentioned in a recent video, which is a total bonus, and I hope that these ladies get a good ending. The pairing of Bernie and Serena on the show Holby City is another delightful Suffolk story between mature lesbians who find themselves growing close when Bernie, a trauma surgeon, was brought in to help oversee some things in the hospital, including Serena, who does not take kindly to it. The start of their relationship is understandably somewhat frosty. But as they continue to work together, they begin to find a simpatico, which then turns to an attraction. For Bernie, this is not a revelation, as she has been attracted to women before, but for Serena, it is. However, the feelings on both sides are genuine, and a deep love develops. There is drama in there, of course, to keep the relationship on its toes. The storyline starts in season 18 of the show with their final appearance in season 23. The characters leave and come back on the show a few times with them ultimately leaving as a committed couple. This was probably due to some fan backlash when in 2019 they appeared to bury a gay while Bernie was off screen for no good reason. Then they retconned that to give the ladies a happy ending. The actresses are wonderful in their roles and bring a wonderful warmth to the characters, which makes this pairing a good watch despite the controversy around some writing decisions. The actress who played Serena, Catherine Russell, has played gay before in a BBC miniseries called The Cazalettes, which was adapted from a book where she played Rachel, the spinster of a privileged upper-middle-class family in England that we follow over the period of World War II. We learn that she is in love with Sid, a music teacher from London, although their relationship has not been constantly consummated despite strong feelings on both sides. When Rachel gives Sid the invitation to come to her bed, it appears she is subsequently racked with guilt about giving over to her desire, and in the miniseries that is more or less where it is left. I have read the Suffolk storyline had more depth in the book and also a more satisfactory ending, but it does feature a mature Suffolk lady in Sid and thus secures a place on this list. The entire miniseries can be found on YouTube or you can just watch Rachel and Sid's storyline. I have linked you to a playlist in the description. Stella Blomvist is an Icelandic crime drama where Stella, a young smart lawyer, is defending a man who is the main suspect for the murder of the Prime Minister's advisor. The key to his defence appears to reside in a mysterious blue bag that she is tipped off about anonymously. She manages to trace that anonymous tip to the Minister of Internal Affairs, a woman called Dagbusht, 
And across a series of encounters, Stella develops a more personal interest in Doug Bush, and when she dangles the possibility of a liaison as a bargaining chip, it appears that Doug Bush is most certainly interested. I've only seen an edit of this relationship linked in the description, so I'm not sure what else happens outside of the sapphic storyline, but it looks like it is a solid series with a good dose of politics, corruption, and flexible morals, and of course, a mature sapphic lady as a love interest. For a different pace, Ich Will Dich is a German made-for-TV film that follows the story of a woman, Marie, who works as an architect with her husband. Her head is turned by the fiancé of an ex turned friend, the free-spirited and coquettish Isla. When Isla finds herself staying at Marie's place, feelings begin to emerge, and while Isla is open to it, Marie is more conflicted, not just because she has a husband and children, but because she is struggling with what her attraction means. Things are further complicated by the fact that Isla intends to marry her fiancé but also wants something with Marie. I watched this movie a long time ago and remember thinking it was a solid and touching film, one that ends well, complete with a last minute dash to the airport, although a rom-com it is not, it's definitely in the drama territory. I've also found a copy of the film on Daily Motion, which I've linked for you in the description, although you will need to flex your German skills as it doesn't have any English subtitles. In 1995, a surprise cult hit came out in French cinema called Gazon Maudit, also known as French Twist in English. It's about a housewife, Loli, who, upon finding out her husband has been cheating on her, is quite happy to be seduced by the lesbian plumber Marie-Jo, who she invites to move in with them. So begins a little ménage à trois, much to the husband's chagrin. When an opportunity presents itself to get rid of Mahijo, the husband takes it, but it's not that easy. It seems that this experience has woken something up in Loli, and perhaps there are some more genuine feelings than just revenge on a philandering husband. From the single review I read, since I have not seen it yet, it sounds like this comedy did well with audiences despite the taboo subject back in 1995 as a result of a clever script. The actress playing Marie-Jo is also the writer, which saw her win a César for the script and a nomination for a Golden Globe for Best Foreign Film in 1996. The next few are shows that I've mentioned before on my channel, so let me cover them only briefly here. Station 19, where Maya and Karina meet in Season 3, which leads to marriage and to, as we speak, them starting a family. I've really enjoyed their storyline and think it has been, for the most part, really well done. Gentleman Jack, where we follow real-life Anne Lister and how she met and married her love Anne Walker. Vigil, which also stars Saran Jones as a detective in this crime mystery drama as she investigates a case each season. It also prominently features her love affair with fellow detective Kristen Longacre. Harlan Coben Shelter had two sapphic threads in the show, one of which featured some mature sapphic ladies, when Shira and Hannah, two high school best friends, reconnect and discover their feelings for each other are still very much present. It did get cancelled after one season though. How I Forgot Carol on my original list is a mystery, so here I am correcting that oversight, because how could I forget Kate Blanchett's turn as Carol in this sapphic classic? Wentworth also has some mature rep, and quite a bit of it now that I think about it, from Beer to The Freak, to Bridget, there are a few mature ladies to pick from here, and that is me having only watched the first five seasons. From memory, it's about season three that things get more overtly sapphic. And finally, I have Emma Dahl, who, back in 2017, had two long-term characters, Vanessa and Charity, start a no-strings-attached romp that ended with them falling in love. Things went pear-shaped for the couple when the actress playing Vanessa went on maternity leave twice over the last few years, but she's recently back, and look, perhaps the writers will eventually get them back together, or am I just kidding myself? The storyline we did get, however, I found very enjoyable and I've linked a channel dedicated to the pairing. I have quite a few more film and TV shows with more mature Suffolk ladies to share with you, so stay tuned and until next time, lady lovers.